quickly go to the book of Proverbs once again. God has got us over there today once again, and I sure be a blessing to you. We're going to read verses 7 through 12, and uh, hopefully something will be said that will work in our hearts and change our lives and make us more what God has us to be. Uh, notice what the Bible says here, and uh, uh, verse number 7. He that reproved the scorn and get it to himself shame, and he that rebuke a wicked man, give it to himself a block. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Get this, if thou be wise, that's our subject today, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Look at it again. If thou be wise. If you be wise, uh, guess what? It'll be for you. You'll be wise for it thyself. The Bible said, but if you scornest, and we'll get into some of that, uh, thou alone shalt bear it. Father, would you bless now, would you help, would you encourage, would you teach the great truth that you've given to us today. And Lord, help us leave from this place better people because we've been amongst your people in your word. Dear God, allow your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. Thank you so much again for the great truth of your word. Please do something, dear God. Please do something in this place. And God, if someone's not saved, uh, do that work that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, today, again, if thou be wise. If thou be wise. Now, I read verses 7 through 12, but we're going to deal with quite a few verses, of course, here today. And uh, you see on your outline, verses 1 through 18. Preach every one of those verses. Well, we're going to get a truth walking down through these verses, and I hope it'll be a blessing uh, to you. Uh, I don't know if um, you watch TV or if you've uh, seen this on TV, but Whoever uh, saw the movie or heard of, uh, not the movie, but the game show, uh, even heard of it, who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah. Who wants to be a millionaire? And, and by the way, uh, and if we're honest with ourselves, if I was to ask that question without us going on the game show, of course, uh, most of us will say, yeah. now, now, if, if you don't want to be a millionaire, go ahead and be one and give it to me. <laughs> you just learn it and let me have it, okay? Because I really believe that anybody in this place today is saying, being a millionaire, yeah. Now, you didn't say it would solve all your problems. Right. We're not saying that. But we're saying, man, it sure would be nice to be a millionaire. Yeah. But let me ask you this question today. We want to we want, we want, we want to, kind of take that, that thought of who wants to be a millionaire and ask you this. Who wants to be a fool? Mm. Mm. Come on, preacher. Nobody? No one's taking up on that? Here, here's the thing I want you to understand. God is saying uh, to become a millionaire uh, is something that's pretty difficult. But to become a fool is something that's very easy. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, you want to know the reason why? It's because God says that this foolishness starts when we're young. Yeah. And it just increases and grows. I write this down. Boy, I, you lost, I lost you already. All right. <laughs> My verse 22, verse number 15, the Bible says this. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. <clears throat> but the rod of correction shall drive it from, far from him. God is saying this is something that's in there. This is something that, that will grow if we don't deal with it. Come on, help me now. Amen. So in order to become a fool, God is saying all you got to do is keep on living without getting all of some wisdom. Come on. Now, nobody wants to be a fool. But in fact, let, let me give you this verse here. God says, I want you to realize that the fool don't even understand God. For Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And what? They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. They are, there is none that doeth good. It's easy to be a fool. Yeah. Oh, I want to be a millionaire. God says it's going to take some work, but guess what? It's easy to be a fool, but it also takes some work to become wise. Yeah. Who wants to be wise? Now, everybody will go, me. And God says, okay, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't come naturally. Come it's not something that's just out there and we become uh, the wise people that God would have us to be. we got to get a hold of some things in the Word of God so we can be the wise people of God. Amen. Uh, watch this now. Uh, I, I don't know of one person. If you do know somebody, I want you to spring up real quickly and tell me who it is. I don't know of one person who said, my goal in life is to be a fool. 
Oh, my goal in life may be to be, be, be again a millionaire or to be a, be, be, be a, 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 a something, a, a contractor or an engineer or a doctor. But I heard one person say, I'm, 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 I'm working hard at being a fool. Mm. No, nobody does that. Oh. I'm like this. Listen to this here. I don't believe there has ever been one person who has tried to be identified as the number one fool in the world. There's Guinness World Record books where you can become the number one. I, I haven't seen one person say, I've been going for that record. I've arrived. Come on. Come on. Nobody wants to be that. But guess what? It's one of the easier things to be than to get your name in the Guinness World Record book for some other achievement. And you and I need to realize this here, that nobody wants to be a fool. But most people are becoming fools. Why? Because they're not doing what it takes to become wise. I don't think I can. That about anybody, uh, uh, ask anybody to say, you know what, uh, give me the belt, you know, like in, in, in different things, you've got the uh, world, uh, uh, the boxing belts, and you've got in, in basketball, the championship trophy, and uh, you, in just any other sport, you got something to show yeah. that you've arrived to the top of your game. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen anybody running around saying, here's my championship fool belt? <laughs> Come on. Come on, Richard. I, I, you got the, you got all the trophies in hockey and basketball and anybody running around saying, look, I, you know how they kiss those trophies. Now, look, I've earned this. Yeah. What is that? That's the champion food tournament. Amen. Nobody. Come on. Come on. But it's something, again, we don't get a hold of in life and realize that we can become a fool. Yeah. I don't want to be a fool. I want to be wise. The Bible said, are you still with me now? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody said in verse number 12. Now get this now. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. And I just want to take you through this. Thing. If you be a fool, you're going to be a fool by yourself. Yeah. You say, preacher, we shouldn't be calling people a fool. No, again, I'm not here calling you a fool. But the Bible has us have God saying there's the fools around here in the world. Amen. And God can say anything he wants to say. Yeah. 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 And so I'm just going to preach God's word. So how do we get to this? We'll do this for me. Go to Proverbs chapter 1 if you don't mind. Proverbs chapter 1. Because we got more than just the fools out there. As a matter of fact, I didn't read the verse for you, but in verse number 6, the Bible says, Forsake the foolish you lead them. And go in the way of understanding. Come on. That's what we got to get away from this. Don't become a fool and stay away from fools. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> but, but, but it's something, again, we don't work at. Here we are in Proverbs chapter number 1. Look at verse number 22, if you don't mind. Because God wants to show us not only the fools of life, but there's some others that he wants to show. <laughs> are you still with me today? Come on. Yeah. Look at verse 22. How long, get this now, ye simple ones. So God said, there's the simple one. How long, ye simple ones, when you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, <laughs> and fools hate knowledge. So God says, hey, uh, we're in Proverbs chapter number 9, and God talks about the fool, and of course, how you can be wise. But God said, there's more people out there than just a fool. There's those who are, again, simple. We'll work on that. And God said, there are scorners. And yes, there are fools out there. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Let's just go back to it here. Who will say, my goal in life is to be the most simple person there is? Now, now, wait a minute. I know some of you are saying, well, I want to live simple. Okay. Now, God says simple. No, listen to me. Simple. Love simplicity. No understanding. Yeah. Right. And that's what also the scorners. Look what God says here. You scorners delight in your scorning. Who says today, I want God to look down on me and say, there was a scorner right there, and I'll tell you, I'm so proud of him. <laughs> None of us. So here's something I want you to write down, because I need you to really understand. The only outline now, write this down. First of all, here's what God is saying. We need to deal with the ignorant. All right. The ignorant. And what it is, is God said the ignorant are the simple ones. How long? Get them because we not, when I say ignorant, listen to me now here. They're, they're, they're ignorant. And, and or, or there's the ignorance. So however you want to put it down on your outline. And they're just simple people. Do this here. It's Proverbs 9, verse number 4. The Bible says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Uh, uh, as for him that wanted understanding, he said to him. Now again, the Bible says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Whoso is simple. Who is it that's simple? The one who lacks understanding. Yeah. Yeah. The one who lacks it, they don't yeah. know. Yeah. And so the simple one, uh, here comes that, 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 again, that person that sit, my son of sinners and tight, he can sit down and die. But here's what happens. They're so simple uh, uh, that they just turn in. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
No, 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 no. Hey, listen, again, I'm, I'm dating myself just a little bit. And I had a birthday, so I think I can. Um, we had that, that show on TV when I was growing up, and it was called Lost in Space. <laughs> and you remember that old young boy, what was his name, Will? Uh, uh, huh? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure some of you older ones don't want to deny your age. <laughs> and of course, he, he, he was just so naive. He was so simple. But, but he had a robot that would say stuff to him like, danger, danger, danger. Remember that? Danger. Good old Will, he just like that. Will, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not understanding. They don't know what's on the other side. Yeah. But here's the crazy thing about it. When we read that verse number 22 of chapter, Proverbs 1, God says that they love simplicity. Some of they like the, they, 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 they lack understanding, but they love simplicity. Yeah. I don't want to know. Oh, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, then I might have to do it. Mm. God says that's not the way. That's just ignorance. Come on, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. And then notice this here, Proverbs 14, verse number 15. Are you still with me now? Proverbs 14, verse 15. The simple believe in every word. <laughs> but the prudent man looking well to his going. Uh, so they, they, they lack understanding, they love simplicity, and they're led away easily. Mm. That what mama used to call it like a fish finally getting a hook in his mouth. He's coming in the shore. Yeah. Hey Amen. And then God said, come on now. Don't, don't be that way. Write this down. Are you still with me? Amen. Write this down. Proverbs 22, verse number 3. Proverbs 22, verse number 3. I, I, I want to be wise. I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to be simple. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse number 3. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. He seeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Hmm. Can I ask you a question? Who would say, again, I want to be the ignorant, simple one. Nobody. Yeah. But God says, okay, you don't have to be. Yeah, yeah. He's given us some instruction. Wait a minute. There's not only the, the, the ignorant one, but uh, there's, and that's the symbol, but there's the insolent one. That's the scorner. This, this is the one, I'll tell you, you can't do, and he said you scorn it. Delight in their scorn in Proverbs 122. They delight in it. There's a delight in scorning. There's a delight in taking mocking the things of God. There's a delight when they take in and, and hear you say something about I'm trusting God. And they say, for what? There is no, there's a delight in that. Come on. That's what we've got in the world today. Yeah. Where is God? I'm seeing God. By the way, the Bible says, you know, you better trust the Bible. The Bible says there people like that since the beginning of time. Yeah. Yeah. People like that. Come on, where is this coming? Where is uh, and here's what God has said. You better be glad I am long suffering to us. Amen. Amen. Not willing any should perish. Come on. Yeah. Now, now here's what God has said. Nobody wants that. But understand something. They delight in that. They enjoy that type of a life. And Bible says here in, that, uh, 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 in, in, in Proverbs 13, verse number 1. Write this down. A wise man heareth his father's instruction. Proverbs 13, verse 1. But a scorner heareth not rebuke. A scorner says here, you know what? Uh, first of all, I delight in what I do. And number two, I defy what you say. Come on. Wow. Yeah. That, that's who it's going to be. And by the way, you keep talking about what God's going to do to me. He hasn't done anything to me. You better be thankful he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, and they, right, are you still with me now? Yeah. And this is one of the things God says that, that really gets them. Uh, they delight in what they do. They defy in what the, God's trying to give to them. And they despise the godly. Wow. You holy rollers make me sick. Oh, okay. Let me. Can I don't want you to think I'm preaching to make stuff up here. Again, remember verse number 7 and 8 in Proverbs 9. He that reproved the scorn and gives himself shame, and he that rebuked the wicked man giveth himself a block. Reprove not the scorn unless he hate thee. Yeah. Rebuke the wise man, he will love thee. Here's what God says. When you try to tell somebody what thus says the Lord, and it's not going along with what they want, here's what started happening. I don't like you. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. God said they'll say, I hate you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you bring up sin, when you shine a little light, when you tell them what thus says the Lord, come on, help me now. Yeah, that's right. God said, that's the insolent. Yeah. That's the scorn. Wait a minute, there's one more. Are you still with me? Yeah. yeah. In Proverbs 122, God talks about the fool. And what does the fool do? Hate knowledge. They hate knowledge. 
Number three, write this down. We got the ignorant one, we got the insolent one, and then we have the immovable one. Well, they sing that song, I shall not be moved, but it's not for the fact they're standing for Jesus. They said, I'm standing for me. Right. You can say what you want to, by the way. The, the first one is the simple one. The second one is the scorner. And the third one is the stubborn one. Hmm. You know, God said, we got stubborn people. People will say, you can't move me. You can't tell me. You can't, can't and, and change my mind. This is the way it is. This is where it's going to be. And God says, guess what? You don't want to be that. Because we might be wrong. Hey, Amen. No, wait a minute now. I didn't say, say, say get this now. We might be wrong. God's always right. I didn't say we are always right, but God's always That's right. right. Come on. But what does this immovable one do? Reject the wisdom of God. Mm. They hate knowledge. What does, the, what does this stubborn one do? Ridicule righteousness. Proverbs 14, verse number 9. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. Mm -hmm. Fools make a mock, ridicule, or mock at sin. All of that, that holiness, all that going to church, all of that they're reading the Bible, all of that they're living the holy, uh, righteous Christian life. Mm -hmm. It just ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible says here. Are you still with me? Yes. They even rejoice in their sin. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 15, verse number 2. Well, this Proverbs got quite a bit of stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Verse 15, verse number 20. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him. Rejoice now. It brought joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. <laughs> but a man of understanding walketh upright. Here's a verse I want you to kind of get to kind of close this off with on this portion about the food. Proverbs 17, verse 10. Again, if you don't get it all, go back and look at it. Get it uh, somehow. But the Bible says, a reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Wow. You can be a fool of death. You know what? He's still going to be a fool. Yeah. Well, amen. Well, that's something happens. Yeah. And what is that? Are you still with me? Yes. Look at verse number 12. If thou be wise, what's happening here? Thou shalt be wise for thy sake. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. So here's the whole thing about it. It's something that's born inside of there, Brother Jeffrey. Foolish is bound up in the heart of a child. But here's what God is saying. If you start making decisions yeah. to be wise, and you start allowing God's word to take in and, and, and take and do an inspection in your life, and from that, you and I start responding to what the inspection is. Come on. Yeah. God says, you be wise, it'll be good for you. Because mm -hmm. guess what? The person next to you may not want to be wise. Mm -hmm. So if they don't want to be wise, here's what God is saying. They, they don't have to deal with themselves. Did you hear those verses I say here? Mm -hmm. The Bible says here in verse 23 in Proverbs 22, the simple uh, are passed on and are punished. Did you hear what I, what I said again about the, about the, he said in verse 17, a proper, in verse 10, Proverbs 17, and a hundred stripes until a fool, what does it do? Nothing. Mm. Nothing. So you and I have got to decide something here. Now watch this here now. Here's the good thing about God. Did, 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 have you heard this here thought before? God loves you. Yeah. Oh, many of you haven't heard it, I guess. Can you just say, yeah, amen, or right on, hallelujah, pray the Lord. Yeah. Have you heard? That's what I was going to do. Have you heard that God loves you? Amen. Well, then understand this here. Because of that great love, here's what he does. He works on us so we don't become fools or scorners or stay simple. Amen. He wants us to be wise. He wants us to take and have those practical skills for everyday living. Remember, that's what wisdom is. God said, I want you to have those skills. I want you to be able to live daily with a, with a blessed life, with favor in your life. But if you can't do it, if you don't do what the Bible tells us to do. Amen. So write these things down. Now we get to the meat of the message. The meat ain't that much. Matter of fact, I got such uh, thin chickens that uh, you, you'll be done with this here meat so quick. Amen. <laughs> First of all, write this number one. The cause. The cause. There's two calls that are here in the word of God. God is saying, I need you to get this here. There's a call on your life from, from, the, from, from wisdom, but there's also a call from wickedness. Come on. Yep. Don't, listen, don't get to a place to think that the only call or the only challenge in my life is always going to be from good. No, God is saying, you better wake up and you better understand. Wickedness is over there calling you also. Wisdom is calling you. And God said, walk in wisdom and don't walk in wickedness. Amen. Amen. Look at 
verse number one. You're still with me now. Say amen. amen. Proverbs 9. Get back to it. We're going to labor in it for just a little bit. Proverbs 9, verse 1 through 4. Wisdom has built in her house. She has hewn down her seven pillars. You say, preacher, seven pillars. Man, I went back to study that, Brother Scott, and I found out something. When they built those houses by there, they were taking building with these four pillars, with these three rooms. But here's what God said. Wisdom is a whole lot better. They had, we didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. But here's what God said. And you can go back and find it. They say seven pillars. But all I want you to know is this. God said, when you build my way, you will have a house that will stand forever. Amen. Amen. God lets us know when he talks over in Matthew chapter number 7 about the wise man who built his house upon a rock. But the foolish man built it on the sand. Now here's what God says, verse number two. I'm still in Proverbs nine. She have killed her beast. She have mingled her wine. She all she have also furnished her table. She have sent forth her maiden. Get this now. Remember, I'm talking about the call. She cried upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. For as for him that wanted understanding, she said to him. In other words, God said, you don't have to stay a school of fool or a scorner or simple. You can be wise. And wisdom and say, come in here, come in here, come in here. Remember, I told you that you got that wicked one always in dark places. Yeah, yeah. But you got wisdom high up on the hilltop saying, hey, I want the world to know I'm right here. You don't have to look for me. You, in other words, I'm not hiding. You don't have to take a say, which way do I go? I go that way. Amen. Good. Wait a minute. Look at verse 13. A foolish woman is clamoring. She is simple and know of nothing. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> For she sitteth at the door of her house on the seat in the high places in the city. Now, I didn't now to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn and hit her. And as for him that wanted for understanding, uh, she said to him, Wait a minute now. I thought that was the same thing that wisdom was doing. You're right. But wickedness is doing the same thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Here's the sad thing. Wickedness is something we do naturally. Yeah. 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 Write this down. Just so you don't, don't think I'm making it up. Psalm 58, verse number 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Mm -hmm. They go astray as soon as they are born. Here's what God, Ms. Naomi, watch, Ms. Norma, watch this. I don't know why I keep saying Naomi to you. But Ms. Norma, watch this here. Here's what God says. They extract from the womb, they go astray as soon as they're born. He say, no way, preacher. And I like what God does. He says, speak in lies. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All of a sudden, your little toddler comes in and you say, did you do that? <laughs> Even before that, here they are in the crib. Wah! 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 You change the diaper. Wah! 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 You take, give them a bottle. Wah! Turn the carousel off. What's wrong with them? Nothing. They just want you to pick them up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't gonna stop crying till you pick me. Yep. Yep. We had kids that did that too. But you know what our kids learned real quick? We weren't gonna pick them up. <laughs> That our lady right here, we kind of teased her about, she don't really much know about it, but we had her crib in our room. You know, uh, Mike was born early. He had to be in the room because he would stop breathing and we had to hit the crib. We didn't know what would happen with Darlene and stuff. And so uh, she'd be waking up and, and uh, early in the morning and first of the time, ah! she'd stay right there. After a while, we, we wake up and here she is in her crib sitting up, trying to pull little animals off the sheet. <laughs> That's right, you better entertain yourself, because I ain't. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with you. Right. We, we, we change the diaper in the middle of the night. Yeah. Hey, man. And it ain't time to eat yet. We're not eating, you're not eating, because we're on a budget around here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what God said. There's two calls out there. Yeah. Wickedness and wisdom. Wait a minute now. There's two choices out there. Yeah. The yeah. choices. The choices. Look at verse number 16. God said, Who's so the simple turn in Israel? Are you still with me? Yeah. So the simple turn in Israel. And as for him that wanted understanding, she said, Now remember, we read that with wickedness. 
But look at verse number four again. Whosoever is simple, let him turn to the hinder. As for him that wants understanding, she said to him, wait a minute, I'm, I'm getting confused here. God says, no, you got a choice. Right. Which way are you going to turn? Amen. Yeah. Which way are you going in? Who are you going to allow to take and be the one to lead your life? Now remember, if thou be wise, thou should be wise for thyself. And you can't tell me turning in toward wickedness is a wise choice. Right. Yeah. It, 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 here's the reason why, listen to me now, here's the reason why we turn in toward wisdom. Because we understand wisdom is trying to get us closer to the person of God. Come on. Wickedness is getting us away from God. Yeah. Yeah. We understand that not only... Uh, uh, wisdom trying to get us to the person of God, but wisdom helps us to understand the position of God, what He should have in our lives. Come on. He should be priority. He should yeah, be preeminent. Yeah. He should be the one that we look to whenever we've got a decision. Come on now. Yeah, man. Man. You know what wickedness says? You don't need that kind of instruction from God. You can make decisions on your own. Yeah. Wickedness, uh, wisdom is trying to get us to the person of God, the position of God, and get us to understand the power of God. You know what that means? What is that real simple here? God can destroy you. Yeah. 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 Wickedness does nothing but lead you to your own destruction. Yeah, right, right. So I, 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 wickedness is, is saying, hey, come my way. What's that? Hum, a human way. But, but, but wisdom is saying, come my way. What's that? The heavenly way. Yeah, right. So the question is, which way do you, you got a choice? You got the human way or the heavenly way? You got God or you got the devil? Which one do you want? Yeah. yeah. Let me keep moving here. We got to get done with this now. Bible tells to us, not only there are the two calls and then the two choices, the choices, but there's the contrast. And this is so simple. What's that, preacher? Wickedness and wisdom. The wicked man or the wicked individual or the wicked, however you want to do it, is calling us. And the wise man is saying, you know what? Come my way. Why? Because wickedness, now watch this now. Wickedness is not going to help you to be wise. And the wise man is not trying to make you wicked. Right, right. Yeah. Preach it. You're so simple today. Right. If it's so simple, why haven't we got it? Yeah. Right. If it's so simple, why aren't we getting it? Now watch this now. The wick get this. Please understand it's about the wicked man. And I don't have time to really labor it, but Proverbs 1, verse number 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When God talks about the wicked one, please get a hold of this. God said the wicked one is an unteachable person. They're just unteachable. And by the way, they're unteachable, which makes them unreachable. Yeah. Unteachable and unreachable means they're unresponsive to the things of God. The opposite is true of the wise man. The wise man is teachable, he is reachable, and he is responsive to the things of God. So my question to you today is this, which way you want to live your life? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of person do you want to be? I want to be a wise man. He said in verse 9, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. God says, you got to understand, there's two contrasts here. Hey, the, the wife, listen to me now. Are you still with me now? Say amen. amen. The wise man recognizes his shortcomings. Yeah, amen. The wicked man basically thinks he's arrived. The wise man realizes he has limitations in this life, and I can't do anything except trust in the Lord. The oh. wicked man said this here, I have no limitations. You can't stop me. You can't slow me down. You can't bring me down. Hey, guess what? All it's got to take is just one little incident in your life, and God will show you who's in charge. Amen. Yeah. He recognizes shortcoming. He realizes limitations, and he responds, the wise man does, responds properly to the wisdom of God. Those are two contrasts. Which one do you want? Then number four. You still with me? Amen. We got the call. We got the choices. We got the contrast. And then God says, well, let's look at the consequences. The consequences. Remember we talked about that first one through four about that wise person. Then we got down to later. Start talking about that, uh, that, that wicked person. Well, listen how it ends that first portion in verse 5. The wise one. Come, eat of my bread, drink of my wine, which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and what? Live. Yeah. And go in the way of understanding. God says there's two consequences. I'll give it to you in a minute. Look down at verse 17. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eat, eaten in secret is pleasant. 
but he knoweth not that the dead are there. And her guests are in the depths of hell. Here's the gospel, two consequences. But in there, God, he said, you can eat at the feast or you can sit at the funeral. It's up to you. It's up to me. I could be at the feast or I could be at the funeral. He says in verse number 11, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. You can sit at the feast, or you can stay at the funeral. Wow, which one do you want? Now again, God said, the choice is yours. Yeah. 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 How long are you between two opinions? You can't keep living this way. Yeah. One side with the Lord, and then the next day with the wicked. Yeah. yeah. Don't work that way. Come on, preacher. So, so here's the thing, write this down. Not on your outline, but write it down. Right now. Let, let's get it down real quickly. First of all, God says you and I need to shun the foolishness of this world. Yeah. Get away from it. That's good. Don't, don't listen to me. Don't, don't allow foolish people to be around you. Don't allow foolish people to teach you. Don't allow foolish, foolish people to influence you. Shun them. Run away from them. Get as far away as you can, as fast as you can. Amen. From foolishness. Why? Because it won't do anything but destroy you. Remember, our house is on the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Stay away. Stay away. So here's what you and I need to do. Say, God, help me identify foolishness out there. Yes. But wait a minute. Help me identify foolishness in me. Yes. Are right, they still with me? Yes. I need to shun foolishness. But then also, I need to seek to be faithful. Amen. The faithfulness that I got to seek. Now watch this now. Verse 10. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Notice what it says here. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Mm -hmm. I need to seek to be faithful. The only reason I'm going to take it, listen now, have this fear is because I understand the respect, the reverence, and the response of God. But here's what he says here, knowledge of the holy. So in other words, God says, we can say, oh God, I, I reverence you, God, I respect you, God, I respond to you. God says, Just listen to me now, there's no way until you decide to know the holy. He says to us, my people don't even know the difference between the holy and the profane. Yeah. So I got to know the holy. So here's what I want to do. You say, preacher, how do I know the holy? How about this here? Get to know the sovereign. Come on. Yeah. Get to know the God of heaven. Amen. Get to know the one who controls all of this. Yeah. Yeah. See, God says you need to get to know him. Why? Because he's holy. He told us he was holy. Amen. Amen. And now he wants us to be holy. Amen. Who else do we need to get to know? How about this here? That's not get to know just the holy sovereign God. Let's get to know the holy so uh, son of God. Amen. Yeah. The holy son of God who knew no sin, had no sin. He was our example. Amen. What is that? John 8, 29. He did always those things that pleased the Father. You and I can't be holy without knowing the Holy Sovereign, without knowing the Holy Son. And guess what? We need to learn the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You learn the Holy Spirit. And in order to do that, you decide this here. I'm not going to breathe him. I'm not going to quit him. I'm going to walk with him. And that means this here. I'm going to let him take my hand and lead me all the way. God says, you and I are not seeking to be faithful. You will never be faithful. You can talk all you want to about fear of the Lord, but God says until you have knowledge of the holy. The holy. You get the, not, are you still with me now? I want knowledge of the holy. I got the holy sovereign, the holy son, the holy spirit. And get this here, it all comes from the holy scriptures. Amen. Amen. Until you know the Bible, you probably won't even bother. Matter of fact, it amazes me how many times people say, well, I'm going to do this. Do you know that contradicts the Bible? I don't care. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Yeah. So your fear of God doesn't mean anything, really. That's right. Come on. Until right. you have knowledge of the Holy. Wow. Write this down. So we need to have, get this, shun foolishness, seek to be faithful, and then we need to ask God to help us to see fruitfulness. See ourselves being fruitful. Now you watch this, verse number 11. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Preach, when am I going to see that? Let me help you with something here. A lot of times we look at how long I'm going to live. I, thank God, just, just yesterday, had that 63rd birthday. It's still young. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> but God has said, this more I want you to get. What is that? I want you to get physical. Ask yourself, am I fruitful in the spiritual? Come on. <clears throat> That's good. That's good. Amen. My fruitful spiritual. Because everybody doesn't make it to be 60. My, my sister, she only made it to be 44. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't get this old. I've lived longer than my mama did. Everybody don't get to be this old. Again, I'm not old. I'm just, I, I'm just uh, aging well. <laughs> Watch this now. Wrong. Ephesians, something like that. Ephesians 5.16. I'm getting done. Redeeming the time. the time. Because the days are evil. Yeah. Yeah. Am I fruitful? Well, if I'm not redeeming the time, how can I say I'm fruitful? You and I need to understand something that God teaches us, James 4, verse number 14. Whereas you know not what should be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time then it vanishes away. So I, I, I want to be spiritual. I, I want to be right with God. I, I thank God for whatever physical I get. But I want to hear God one day say, well done, I'm good and faithful, sir. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So can I ask you three questions real quickly? Who's guiding your life? Who's guiding your life? I know I'm giving you some stuff here, but I'll tell you something here. The time is winding up, but we've got to redeem the time because people today are still growing to be more and more foolish instead of wiser. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who's guiding your life? Here's the next thing. Now, who's governing? Who's governing your life? Yeah. Who can tell you what to do? Who can tell you how to live? Now, I talked about you rebuke that score you get yourself saying, that shouldn't be in the Christian's life. When somebody said, the Bible said, you ought to say, thank God somebody loves me enough to tell me what the Bible says. Amen. Hey. Who's God in your life? Who's coming in your life? And here's the question. Do you really want a godly life? Amen. You just say, leave me alone. I want to live my kind of life. Mm -hmm. Write these verses down. The Bible says in verse, John 15, verse 8, Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. I want a fruitful life. I want to see fruit in my life. I want to bear fruit in my life. I want God to say, that's my son, that's my disciple, that's my child, doing what I told me, uh, that, that I told him to do. John 15, verse 16, ye have not chosen me. That was John 15, 8, but this is 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. So when I'm dead and go, my fruit should still be here. Right. Yeah. I want my kid, my daughter, and my son to say, my daddy, he was one who lived for Jesus. I want my grandchildren to say, my dad, he was the one that loved the Lord. I want them to say, he gave his life all he had until the day he died. Amen. 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 Psalm 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days. Yes. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moment and my day, let them flow in endless praise. Let them flow in endless Praise. Who do you want to live for? Come on. You got to come to the altar and say, God, take my life and let it be consecrated. Lord, to thee. Now, listen to me now. I've been around long enough to know that some people say, I got it. And God says, Can I do it this way? No, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. Let's get honest and say, Stop, stop putting yourself on the scale and let me do the judging. But I found out long ago when I was trying, my kids were little, and I was trying to do this for the Lord and trying to do that for the Lord and involved in these things for the Lord. God said, but you're not where I want you to be doing what I want you to do. And it wasn't until I said in 1988, I remember when, 
I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Just try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. If God were to try us and see if we were completely his, I wonder how bad our grave would be or how good it could be. Many of us will say, I think I'm in a failing grave right now. Father bless them. Thank you so much for your Thank you for these people listening. Please do something in this place. We give you all glory, honor, and praise in dear Jesus.